Today with me, I have Francis Aegis, who is an expert when it comes to the graduate recruitment space. So um, we're going to be diving into a few questions today. Just if you are a fresh grad that is either in uni or looking to get into some graduate roles, I think this will be really, really valuable for you um, just to get some real, I guess, insider tips and tricks. So um, welcome, Francis. Thanks so much for being here. Hi, thanks, Amy. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> I feel like I'm on Oprah or something. This is awesome. <laughs> oh, I think I'm a bit different, but that's all good. <laughs> a bit younger. <laughs> Not as experienced. <laughs> no, that's all good. Well, yeah, one thanks. day, one day. Yeah, yeah, one day, one day. <laughs> Um, well, look, you know, thanks again for being here and I really appreciate it. And um, for those that don't know you, I guess where it would be great to start is just finding out a little bit more about you, um, your own career journey, your own sort of story and, and how I guess you sort of um, ended up working in the, the graduate recruitment space. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I am from Sydney, as you can probably tell from my accent perhaps. Um, so I went to uni uh, straight out of high school. Initially, I actually started studying science. And mm. two years into that degree, I realised it wasn't quite the right career choice for me. So 20 years old, I really had to evaluate and had to, you know, had to have a big think about what I wanted to do moving forward. And I guess what it really came down to and was also at the heart of the reason why I chose to do science was that I really liked helping people. Mm. So I had to think about, you know, what sort of role would interest me or what sort of career path would interest me in terms of my studies. So um, I was fortunate to do a very short internship at a coffee house yeah. um, in human resources. Um, it was only a couple of days, but um, that short um, period really led me into the world of HR. And that's what sparked my interest. So then ended up changing to a business and commerce degree. So I majored in human resources and industrial relations. Um, at the same time, I was working at a big four bank. So yeah. I had that exposure to the business element um, and really enjoyed my time working in financial services. Um, after graduating from, from uni, um, I landed my first role in recruitment, which was actually an experienced hires. So it was at that same um, institution I was working. Mm -hmm. um, so I worked there for about a year, decided to quit, um, as all young people I feel like do, and take a few months and go traveling. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, that for a little while, which was awesome, and then landed here back, back home in Sydney um, and realized I, I needed a job. So yeah. again, I had another kind of crisis um, <laughs> where I had to really <laughs> think about what I wanted. To do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, you know, I, I guess I was in a position where I didn't have to make a rushed decision. Mm. So um, I really had the time to think about, again, what really interests me and, you know, what do I want to do effectively for the next couple of years? So I actually had a friend who had joined the organisation that I work for now and she spoke really highly of it. So piqued my interest in terms of the organisation. Um, but in terms of the type of job and what really led me again into that, um, into the graduates, graduate space, um, was again that that real desire to help people in in yeah. whatever way possible. So I don't have the scientific expertise anymore, um, but certainly do have that HR element that I can hopefully help and have been um, helping people with. So that's what drew me to grad recruitment. And as a young person, I'd like to think myself, um, I really resonate with that. You know, with that crowd. I'm sure you do as well, Amy. There's, you know, you can see sometimes yourself in them and. And I know that it is difficult after you need to pick what you want to do. Yeah. Because I was in the same situation not too long ago. Yeah. So that's kind of my journey um, and still sitting in the grad recruitment space now, which is awesome. Yeah. Fantastic. And I love how you've had that sort of guiding, um, guiding light, if you like, of wanting to help people, but yeah. show up in so many different ways. So, you know, you could have pursued a, a career in science and still done that. Yeah. And you could, you know, now you're in HR and you're, you're doing that every day as well. So um, that's exactly. great. And how did you find the sort of, I guess, the, the traveling? Did that help in, in terms of sort of um, helping your career path or did you find that it sort of hindered you in any way? Yeah. You know, I, it's funny, actually, before I went on my trip, I had a conversation with my dad and he was saying to me, are you sure this is the right decision for you? Um, and I, 
And I had to be really confident and, and kind of bold in saying yes. Mm-hmm. I think personally, how much I grew in that in those short months really outdid anything that I could have learnt at uni um, mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. at work. You have to learn how to make decisions on the fly that are going to impact you. Uh, you need to learn how to stand on your two, your own two feet. Um, but also you need to learn how to make new connections. You know, when you're travelling by yourself or with, with only one other person, it's all about making those friendships along the way and, and creating those connections. So um, I think it really, it really taught me how to do that. Um, and also I found it actually not too hard to justify in terms of when I got back home and we're looking for roles. Yeah. It was, in my opinion, quite actually easy to say, you know, I really wanted to take a break and, and it, it felt like the right time. And, you know, that's the decision I made and I really enjoyed it. And honestly, in interviews, it's actually turned out to be such a good talking point for yeah. interviewers because yeah. it's a nice way to build rapport. And everyone, I feel like, enjoys travelling in some way, shape or form or is from yeah. somewhere yeah. or, you know, and it's a really nice connection point. So I haven't found that it's, it's hindered anything. In fact, I think it's, it's helped me more than anything else. Yeah, oh, I totally agree as well, like, even with my own um, travel and experience as well, like working yeah. and living overseas. Like I always laugh that I had a, a six-month gap year that turned into two-year gap year. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, no great. regrets. Yeah, no regrets. Um, it is great because I know that a lot of people, are, you know, they tend to worry about how it's going to show up on their resume or if it's going to hold them back in any way. So that's really fantastic to hear. Um, and I'm really keen to learn more about, um, you've worked at some really big organisations, like really huge ones that, you know, when you're, I guess, a, a uni student and you're hearing about all these massive big organisations, like sometimes it's really hard to sort of either picture yourself in there or really know what goes on in the day to day. So can you share a little bit of your experience, I guess, working in such large organisations and, you know, how's that been different for you compared to other places that you've worked? Yeah, definitely. Um, And I've been very fortunate to have been employed by and and still are employed by some amazing organisations. I think going in, I mean, majority of my friends from uni were my science friends. So not many of them had that experience. So it was very much a a, a venture out by myself. I think going into an organisation like that, you do need to be as as confident as you as you can or at least pretend to be confident <laughs> for a little bit um, <laughs> exactly I think some of the complexities that come with a large organization so being able to navigate through approval processes or layers in yeah. in management and and that can be a challenge but I think opportunities that big organizations can give you in my opinion have been very beneficial in my career so yeah. you know I was at um a financial institution for majority of my uni degree and then had that opportunity to move internally afterwards so um for me it was a really big thing um also we mentioned we've talked about traveling so obviously we're both passionate about that and mm-hmm. and you know, those global organizations oftentimes can give you that global mobility yeah. which for me is an amazing thing so the opportunity to work in you know, in your flagship locations, London, New York, mm-hmm. you know, anywhere around the world, Dubai, like there are some amazing places I'd love to work. Yeah. Um, and so having that opportunity for me is an amazing draw card to a big organisation. I don't think it's for everyone, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you need to really want to be sometimes what you feel is a, a, a cog in the bigger wheel. Yeah. Um, but there are still ways for you to make your own individual impact. But I think it's about gauging that and seeing what you prefer and what you like. Yeah, it's so true. I think it comes down to your own individual style and, and how you like to work as well. Um, Cause you're right, there's lots of complexity when you get into a big organization and you know, your yeah. communication levels have to be a lot higher. You have to, you know, really yeah. sort of, I guess, uh, conform in a way with a lot of processes and yeah. procedures. So, you know, for some people that just like to make things up along the fly, if you've got that entrepreneurial <laughs> spirit. <laughs> Yeah, and there are some elements of that. You know, you still yeah. can have your own, you know, autonomy. Yeah. Um, I think when you're part of a bigger brand, you know, a lot of the time you're working within that brand to strengthen it. Um, so you do have to be mindful. But, um, yeah, I mean, I sometimes envy people that work in startups. I think it sounds so cool, but I don't know if I could do it myself. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Make it up on the fly. All right. Yeah, and- that's- 
I guess, you know, you, you, you've seen thousands of applications, you know, come through, yeah. through the work that you do now as a graduate recruiter. What are you finding is like the biggest challenge for most grads when they're trying to make the jump from uni into like their first graduate position? Yeah, there's, I think there's challenges that are different for everybody. Mm. I think probably something that is most common is maintaining a work-life balance. I think it's a little bit easier, in my opinion, at uni because you can be flexible around your timetable or you're yeah. surrounded by your friends, so it's easy to catch up for a coffee between lectures or juice or whatever. Um, yeah. Well, that's what I used to do anyway. <laughs> but, you know, at work, it's very much it's, it's structured and you need to be, you're committing your time to be somewhere. So um, you know, sometimes, and, and I struggled with this myself and, and I'm still working on this, but maintaining friendships outside of work and mm. going to the gym and you know, making time for your family um, and your friends and whatever other interests you have. So I think it's, a, it's about that balance. And I think that probably comes back to the time management piece too. So being able to manage your time effectively. I think what, what helps strengthen that is at uni having, if you can, a part-time job or work, mm. you know, casually or even volunteer or work in a student society, um, you know, whatever, you, or in a sports team, it doesn't even have to be work, just, just doing stuff outside of uni. Yeah. Um, I think it really helps teach you those skills that are just going to help you throughout your entire career. And it's always an interview question. Like, I've started interviews myself where they're like, can you tell me about a time you've had to deal with multiple priorities? Yeah. <laughs> you know? And, 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 like, even now we get asked those questions about priorities and time management. So... Um, it's certainly a skill I think that will last you for years to come. That's right. And it's, yeah, it d doesn't end, like you said, when you're in no, you know, graduate roles. It is just the way in which we operate now. We have so many demands coming at us from all day long. I mean, we've got our phones with us all day and we get constant notifications and distractions. Yeah. So it is, yeah, about being able to really, you know, turn on, like switch on and, and turn up. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. That's cool. And can you tell me a little bit more, I guess, um, about the process? So, you know, if I was a, a grad going from uni, like, tell me a little bit more about, I guess, that transition and like what I should be expecting. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, it's actually something that I probably wasn't too well versed about when I was at uni myself. So I actually wish someone had told me or if I would paid more attention, I don't know. But <laughs> you, know, really, <laughs> you really need to start looking like for your grad job before you've graduated, yeah. um, start looking within the fi your final year, so first mm. semester of final year. Most organisations will open for applications in the beginning of the year with the exceptions of some law firms and stuff like that. They run mm. kind of separate processes. But majority of organisations will follow a similar-ish process. Yeah. There will be variations, um, certainly, but um, being really... I think what really will help you with that process is actually turning up to things. So mm -hmm. turning up to things on campus, meeting with the right people, and they'll help guide you through the, whatever individual process that is. So a lot of the times these, interview, these uh, recruitment processes will include an online application form, some mm -hmm. sort of online aptitude um, or reasoning, abstract reasoning, numerical reasoning, um, sort of testing. Yeah. Um, and usually an interview, a case study or some sort of group activity mm. or an amalgamation of all of them. So a little different. Um, also, there are some new processes that are being implemented by other organisations. So um, instead of doing your traditional online testing, it's games. So the gamification of testing is a huge thing that's happening now. Yep. And also similar to what we're doing, but video interviews. Um, so a lot of organisations are employing that in their graduate recruitment processes. Um, mm -hmm. But there is a lot, but I think um, understanding what organisation you're, you're applying for um, and actually understanding their process, a lot of the time, go onto the website, you'll find all the information. We don't yeah. keep it a secret. <laughs> yeah. you know, we want to ensure your success. So, um, you know, make sure you know the organisation you're working, you're, you want to work for and, like, pop onto the website or have a conversation and understand mm -hmm. their process. We usually will follow something like that. That's awesome to see. Like, there's so many different ways now that companies are actually 
using, especially the video interviews I'm finding is a huge thing lately, even like, you know, more than, than great roles, but just yeah. real. I think getting comfortable, um, you know, on video is actually now a real skill um, that people need to really? be able to do, um, you know, and not just off your, your phone when you're driving along in the car, like being <laughs> real about it and, and, and yeah. showing up as if you were going for a face-to-face interview as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, even preparing for our conversation today, Still had to do my hair. Still had to do my makeup. Still had to put clothes oh, on. I didn't do my. I'd be wearing on the bottom. You won't know. <laughs> no, totally. That's great. And I guess if there's anyone that's sort of, um, you know, one of those really prepared people, um, at some grads, like you said, you know, you really do need to start looking in that final year of uni. Um, a lot of people, you know, like your assignments. Sometimes you can leave it to the the night before yeah. or the week before, and then you just you're left with nothing at the end because there's just so much competition. So for someone that's really trying to, I guess, set themselves apart from the competition or um, give themselves a little bit of an advantage when it comes to all of the the process um, with going for a grad role, is there anything that you would recommend that they do? Yeah, absolutely. Well, there's a couple of things. I think the first thing is, yes, we mentioned if you're looking for a grad role in your final year, but actually most organisations will offer internships. Yeah. which will usually take place in your penultimate year. Mm. So looking around your second last year about in, around internships is a really yeah. big piece. Yeah. A, it looks awesome on your resume to say you've worked in an organisation or at a, even if it's an internship anywhere, it doesn't really matter, right? But just yeah. something that you can put on your resume to teach those skills. The other thing is oftentimes if we really like you as an intern, um, and when I say like, I mean you've performed up to standard yeah. Yeah. and you enjoy working for us and you see a career here, mm-hmm. um, oftentimes we are able to actually sign you on as a graduate, which mm-hmm. means you actually will get your contract a, a year before the rest of your cohort. Yeah, that's so, awesome. And you've got something secured so you don't actually have to worry about any of that stuff in your final year. So, yeah. And it, it helps you create those connections. I know when we met before, Amy, we were talking about the power of network mm-hmm. and that's mm-hmm. a really big piece as well. So doing those sorts of things can help build your networks. Yeah. And if you haven't had that opportunity, that's fine. I think one of the things that will actually really help you stand out is building those networks and having people refer you or give you guidance, um, yeah. I think is really mm-hmm. beneficial as well. Um, also, I think sometimes, and this might be my personal observation but Mm -hmm. I feel like sometimes that we underplay our strengths on CVs um, or in applications and I'm guilty of this too Um, so one thing that I've actually started to do to help strengthen my applications you know my resume for whatever opportunities I have in my hopefully long career is actually starting to write down as things happen so I just have like a note on my phone and when I've when I'm in a situation where I feel like, actually, this might be a really good thing for my resume, mm-hmm. I'll note that down. Because so I think when you have some really clear strengths, yeah. some really clear things on your resume and you're able to talk about them, um, sometimes I feel like I'm talking myself up, but, yeah. you know, actually that's what you want to see and that really helps you stand out when you have those really clear, amazing achievements. Yeah. So we can be like, oh, you're 22, 23, 24, whatever, coming out of uni and you've had these amazing experiences. I think that really um, helps you stand out. Yeah, you're exactly right there. I think we're our own worst critic and it's so hard yeah. to, you, you, you know, in Australia as well that you've got that whole tall poppy thing that we've grown up with and, you know, you kind of do feel that you you want to be up there on a level but you don't want to be just that little bit better than anyone else because yeah. you know, you'll get, you know, <laughs> everyone will, will exactly. hate you is, is the impression that you get. So, you know, you think that you're, you're big nerdy yourself or something like that. So... You know, I think that is absolutely fantastic in terms of that um, in the moment, just writing it down. Like we all have those thoughts and we get those opportunities at work where it's like, oh, this would be great to put on my resume. But we yeah, and you that. forget. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And I feel like when you're preparing for like an interview, you remember the things you've done in the last two, three months. You're not good. I feel like I don't remember things I've done in years past. So it's good to keep them down. Yeah, me too. And one of the things I know I work with some of my clients is just getting a list like that, which is just like a huge list of skills and experiences and just keep it up to date. Um, And then when it comes to actually applying for roles, um, you can pull out the most relevant and the the ones that are most relevant for that particular role, but you're not starting from scratch all the time. You know, you've got that there. 
it's like a muscle. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. No, that's cool. And, you know, provided that, you know, someone's sort of gone through the process of, of a grad role, they've done their internships, they've, they've got the position, like they've been offered the, the graduate role, what are some of the yeah. things that you could expect in terms of, like, career growth? Say, for example, just, you know, at, at typical big organisations um, like where you work, um, what are yeah. the sort of things that you could expect in terms of, I guess, progression from there? Yeah, absolutely. So I think it really does depend on the individual. We will give you all of the tools to help you to help you grow. Um, mm -hmm. And most organisations, majority will be the same. Um, so I think it's about putting in the hard yards sometimes, and actually understanding that you sometimes need to do. The, you need to understand the basics. Yeah. Before you can move on, and I think once you've mastered those basics and you've shown that you have the aptitude mm. and the willingness to learn, I think that looks amazing and that will really help you. In terms of the career paths, mm -hmm. it's different for everybody. So you might start a grad role and think, hey, I actually don't enjoy this. I want to do something else. But I think that's an amazing learning in itself. Or you might start a, a grad role and be like, I love this. I'm going to spend the next 30 years fast doing this. Yeah. So yeah. I think it depends on ev on everyone. But I think for, for those first, at least the first 12 months, mm. you know, six or 12 months, it's all about the learning and it's all about the personal development. And something that I was told, you know, very early in my career is, is say yes. If you're given an opportunity yeah. and you think it's the right, the right one for you, if it's going to challenge you, say yes, you yeah. know, and those yeah. things I feel like actually get you noticed for things like promotions and look amazing on your CV when you can say, I was in this role for three months and then I was asked to do this project. Yeah, or, yeah. You know, I volunteered for this and I've achieved this. I think it looks amazing. Yeah, oh, I love that as well. And it's so cool to hear that because I think for some grads, they think, well, once I get this grad role, then I'm stuck at this company for 10, 15 yeah. years and I have to follow this set career path and I have no flexibility or no choice in, you know, what I'm doing. So it's really refreshing to hear that, you know, provided you're, you're putting in the work and you're saying yes to the opportunities that come your way as well, that you can actually carve out, you know, the, the direction that you want to head as well. Yeah, I think it's kind of an archaic view to think you're going to be in the same job for 10 years. Yeah. Maybe that was the reality for maybe our parents, yeah. Amy, but yeah. I think for us it's about being dynamic and I think the market is moving so quickly. There's a there's a shift to the gig economy, yeah. um, to contract work. Like the organisation that I work for now, I started on a six-month contract. Yeah. I took the flight yeah. and it's skipped growing from there it's yeah. been nearly two years so I think you know if, if you go in with the mindset that this is something that I want to do you know you don't have to do it for the next 10 years I think it'll be really boring yeah, yeah. But in my opinion anyway and you can move and grow and also I think in organizations like the ones that I've worked for um, and currently work for I think that the roles are so dynamic that you it 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 will change whether you like it or not. Mm, that's that makes it. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're exactly right. And, and it is good because I guess, you know, it comes from our parents and probably people, you know, that are quite older than us that have these sort of expectations of, you know, that you still do work for someone for 10 years or that you can't yeah. do a, a contract because contract roles aren't stable or secure or anything yeah. like that. You know, we inherit all the different thinking. Exactly. From us, when in reality, it, it's not like that anymore. Exactly. And I almost think like when you're younger and it's the reason why I took a few months off to go traveling, like I don't have that financial responsibility. Like I can take the punt. Yeah, yeah. I can take the gamble to work for six months. And if it yeah. falls down, it falls down. I can take a few, take a few months off and go traveling. Like you, you can, I feel like when you're younger more than anything. Yeah. Yeah. No, exactly right. And what's something that, I guess, in your role or perhaps with the whole graduate recruitment process itself, what's something that someone might be surprised to hear? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I think, oh, surprised to hear. We actually, well, in my role anyway, we yeah. read all of the applications pretty much. Yeah, cool. So, um, anyone that passes the testing, we will read your application. Yeah. So yeah. we think about the scope mm. and the volume mm. of how many we get. Um, 
or how many most recruiters would get. Yeah. Actually, what we do is really big. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we don't have other people to do it. <laughs> well, I don't <laughs> anyway. <laughs> You've got to do all the resumes. Which is why, exactly. Which is why, like we say, the power of networking, right? Or mm. if we've met you on campus and we know you and I can see your name and I recognize your name or, you know, whatever like, the recognition point is. Yeah. Like having that, it's like, okay, I think I might read that person's application first and I know them. I know they're really good. Yeah. So, yeah. It does give you that edge 100%. Yeah. Does. Yeah. That's awesome. And I guess just in your own career journey, I'm really curious to know, like, has there been any, like, really weird jobs you've done or what would you consider perhaps <laughs> even the, the worst job you've ever had to do? A worst even job. Even from really early on. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, my first ever job when I, I was, I think, 14, Yeah. it was at, I don't even know how I was allowed to work. <laughs> it was, like, at the Tui's, like, Tui's beer. Oh, um, yeah. In, yeah in their staff cafe like at the, <laughs> at the plant or whatever you call it the factory yeah, yeah. <laughs> I used to make sandwiches <laughs> in the school holidays Perfect. Uh, 50 an hour and I loved it and I used my first paycheck I'll never forget my first paycheck to buy shoes I was like mom can you please take me to, this, to I think it was like W D S W or something. Yeah. I was like, yeah. can you take me to DSW because I'm gonna buy shoes. <laughs> That's so cool. Don't change. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, exactly. <laughs> it's shoes always win. <laughs> yeah. What about you? What was your like weirdest job? Oh, I, you can't throw the questions back on me. I'm not <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, Well, actually, not weird, but probably unexpected job, I guess, was um, I worked at a service station when I was going through uni. Oh. So I know, I was a servo chick. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> That's so I cool. used to do, like, I used to, yeah, work at and, you know, fill up people's gas bottles and, like, you know, take all the measurements of how many, how much petrol was left in the tanks and all of that stuff. So, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah can't that's unexpected awesome. because, you know, I'm a bit of a girly girl and that's, you know, but it was yeah, great. Yeah, don't worry. Flexible in our uni. That. Yeah, it was flexible in around uni and it worked out really well. That's awesome. I yeah. wouldn't have guessed that. I know. <laughs> Not many people do. <laughs> so, like, given everything that you've actually, you know, accomplished, like, you're still so young and you're, you're absolutely killing it in your career in terms of the grad right. recruitment side of things. So, you know, given everything you've done to date, like, you can rewind the clock until perhaps when you're just finishing high school around 18. Um, is there one piece of, like, career advice that you'd want to give yourself at that age? Ah. Oh. There's so many things I wish I could have told myself. <laughs> yeah. I think actually it's something that I got told by my first success coach when I was in uni and she said to me, the only thing people know you for now is that you've got a really loud laugh. And she's like, is that something? Yeah. I was really shocked that she That's said that, but actually it stuck with me. Yeah. And the point that she was trying to get across was that, you need to start creating your personal brand. And she was like, is that something you want to be known for? And I was like, no, that's actually a bit embarrassing. I'm a lot more than my appearance or my voice or my laugh or whatever, you know. Yeah. I think I'm all of these amazing things. And she's like, I think you are too, but no one really knows that. So how are you going to put that across? Mm. And I really, if I was to go, you know, turn back the clock, I would certainly say that to my younger self. Think about what you want to be known for and start creating that and make decisions that are in line with that. You know, it's funny when we think about brands, you know, the big brands that we have worked for or that we own things, products of everything that they do majority of the time is on brands. Totally. And um, I think we can really apply that to our careers Mm -hmm. um, and ourselves. So yes, I think that's what I would tell myself is, stay true to your to your to yourself and yeah. your authentic self and, and your brand yeah I love that I love that and it's definitely yeah. Yeah, the way we're already there but it's definitely the way forward as well is like you know it's personal branding is going to become so important exactly exactly and it's something that will again just travel throughout your career and your personal brand doesn't have to be around your personality it can, can mm. be around your skills as well or form you know be 
a bit of both. You know, are you an expert in Excel? Are you an expert in this field? Yeah. Are you the go-to person for something? Like even in my team that I work for now, if someone has like a syntax question, I'm yeah. usually the person they go to. <laughs> that part of my brand, I don't know. Um, or if someone has a question about the iconic, because I shop on there all the time. <laughs> usually, <laughs> <you know. laughs> Yeah, and like even like in my friendship circles, like I'm sure Amy, like you're known in your friend, your personal friendship circles for stuff like meets, yeah. cafes, and restaurants. So mm-hmm. one of my friends calls me like his personal Yelp. So yeah. he'll be like, "Hey, personal Yelp, I'm in this area. Where should I eat?" <laughs> so that's part of my brand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so and exactly. business. Yeah, exactly right. And I mean, it's all it's all one and the same these days, anyway. So that's awesome. Totally. And look, where can people, I guess find out a little bit more about either yourself or just grad recruitment in general or um, yeah. you know, anything, any advice or, or last sort of tips for anyone that's watching this that, you know, is in that position of uni and they're like really stressing out about what to do next. Yeah, absolutely. Um, feel free to add, my, add me on LinkedIn. Um, I'm more, you know, I'm pretty responsive on there as best yeah. I can. Um, in terms of understanding, you know, who's best to speak to from individual organisations, actually a really good place to start is your career centre at uni. Yep. Something that I can actually leverage when I was at uni. Um, but absolutely, we actually work with, and the majority of grad recruiters will actually work directly with universities and they will have our details. Yep. So um, have a chat with them and they're usually more than, more than happy to help you. Um, but certainly LinkedIn is a really good place to start um, and I'm happy to answer for any questions. Um, you can also follow majority of organisations or even your startups and whatever else on LinkedIn too. Yeah. Um, or Facebook or Instagram or whatever. Um, the power of social media, right? So yeah, exactly. Um, get, get connected. Yeah, get connected with us. And it's a good platform to ask questions if you can't come and talk in person. Yeah, fantastic. Well, thanks so much for, for coming on and chatting with me today because it's... Hey. I know someone that is a fresh grad that's listening to this will get so much out of it and um, will feel even more confident moving forward. So I really appreciate your time. Oh, I'm glad. Thanks for having me. No worries. <laughs>